Hey guys, got the dogs here, they say hi. Uh, I actually have a friend over and he asked me, what's a crossover? And I'm like, you know, that's kind of a good question. <laughs> and, you know, this channel is designed for people who are new that are just getting into the hobby. And so I figured I'd do a quick video on what a crossover is and what it means. And uh, there's, there's a couple different styles of crossovers. You've got a crossover in a speaker. And in a speaker, uh, a crossover is basically like a traffic signal. Uh, all the high-end frequencies go to the tweeters. And all the mid-range frequencies go to the mid-range. And it sends all the bass frequencies to the main woofers. Okay, So that's how a crossover works in a speaker. And it kind of blends them together and how well they do and how they adjust it uh, at the factory makes a difference. And that's where true crossovers are really nice to, to see in speaker manufacturers. Not all speaker manufacturers have really good quality crossovers. Uh, so that, that, that's one thing. And, and particularly, I, I gotta say, SVS with the, with the prime towers, uh, they've got four speakers. They've got a tweeter, mid-range, and then two woofers, okay? But it's a three and a half way. And the reason it's a three and a half way is the tweeter has its own crossover frequency, and the mid-range has its own cross, crossover frequency. But there's a separate crossover frequency for the uh, top driver and bottom driver, bottom, top and bottom woofers. And they're separated in the cabinet. And so they're isolated, so they don't affect one or the other. But because they have different crossover settings for each driver, they actually produce a different sound. And so for that, uh, you know, for those two drivers, it's just not, uh, just not to have two drivers. It's because it's, they're producing a little bit different sound and giving and blending uh, the sound in a slightly different way. And, and it sounds beautiful. I really like the way it sounds. But that's how a crossover in a speaker works. Now, when a crossover in a AVR works a little bit differently. And I have to give thanks to uh, Ed Mullen at SVS for explaining this to me, uh, because I didn't know until, I don't know, about a month ago. And I mean, I had an idea from just messing around with it, but I, I didn't really know exactly how it worked. And what how it works is, when you have your speakers set to, to large, there is no crossover, there is no filtering. The tower or the center or whatever uh, channel speaker, it's getting just the full range of everything. All of the uh, highs and lows just goes to the speaker and then it's the speaker's job to distribute those frequencies to the proper driver, okay? Now, in when you switch it to small, uh, which again, small versus large uh, on the speaker settings. Here, I'll, I'll show it to you real quick here, uh, what I'm talking about so it's not uh, completely, you know, so at least you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are set to small. If I change that and set it to large, uh, it, it takes away any crossover function off the AVR. So that's why I have them to small. And small is basically base managed. Large is not base managed. Okay, and, I, and I've gone over this you always want to have it set to small so that you can send your frequencies to the subs so they can get that uh, that signal and, and work properly. If you don't do that, uh, you, it's going to be really hard to equalize your subwoofer or, or, or you know sound match it, you know integrate it into the system. It's going to be harder to do that if you don't have them set on small. So what does that do? What does the small setting do? Well, it sends a signal to your. Let's say it's going to this tower. It sends the full range signal to that tower, but with a 12 dB filter at the crossover setting. So we go back to the crossover setting. All right, let me get back here real quick. Hello. All right. My, oh, sorry, there we go. All right, so the crossover setting. All right, so 80 hertz. So the crossover set at 80 hertz. And what happens is at 80 hertz, it may be a little above, maybe a little below, but at 80 hertz, all the signal below 80 hertz gets shaved off at a 12 dB filter, okay? So it doesn't take all of the sound away, it just takes, you know, quite a bit away. Now, it, you still get plenty of signal to where, you know, that tower will still, if, if it's got a base issue to where, you know, like I said, I had a, a pair of bookshelves that really gave me some wonky response in room and, uh, and, you know, I had it set at 90 and it was giving me a problem at 40. <laughs> so it still gets plenty of signal, but it's just not as much. And it allows your AVR to pump out more power to the highs and mids. And you know, it, it's, it's less stress on your amplifier, less stress on the towers. 
And so, you know, it makes it where you don't have to run as big of an amplifier. I mean, my amplifier is only 95 watts per channel, and that's only rated on two channels. So it's not a bunch of power. So that's what that does. Now, it takes the same signal and duplicates it and sends it to the subwoofer. But instead of a, a 12 dB filter, it ha it's a 24 dB filter. So it shaves it off sharply at the frequency. So at 80 hertz, it really cuts it off. And so your, st your sub receives a lot less signal above 80 hertz. And so that's why I'm real particular about where you set your crossovers, because if you set it at 60 or even worse at 40, uh, you know, your sub is getting a very, very small window of signal and it's just not going to be able to do its job. Or, or let's say your sub will do a better job at producing those signals than your main towers. Uh, I mean, and there, of course, there are exceptions, but they're really generally a lot more expensive and a lot bigger. <laughs> so, you know, true full range speakers aren't very common. They are very, very expensive. So that's how that works. So you've got the, the tower uh, crossover that kind of reroutes all the signals inside the box and requires no power to work. The crossover in the tower requires no extra power. Uh, the crossover in the AVR is just its signal processing within the AVR to distribute those signals to whether it's going to go to the subwoofer or the tower. So it's it's doing all the switching in the box rather than in, in the uh, it's doing all the switching in the receiver itself rather than in the tower. Now then there's a third type of crossover uh, which is on the subwoofer and that's a crossover point that you just kind of dial to whichever setting you want and. It's, I don't know, I'm not going to say it's becoming obsolete, but it's less and less important with all of this switching. But if you do have a particular setup, it just gives you some more control. And basically what that crossover is, is it's a filter that applies a filter above whatever setting you're setting it to. So if you set the crossover to uh, 60, then everything above 60 is going to be filtered off. And it's just going to get everything below that. So that's how a crossover works. Um, I'm hopefully that explains it a little bit uh, to help you guys who are new and trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, too, too often with some of this stuff, these terms are thrown around and they're not really explained very well. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do with this whole channel is make this stuff a little easier. But that's my understanding of what crossovers are, how they work, and how they function. And uh, you know, true crossovers within speakers are, are a good thing to look for. Uh, and, and understanding how your crossover function works on your AVR is good to look at. And again, you can check out the website uh, and look up the um, large versus small speaker setting in the setting up your gear section on the website. And it puts all of this in black and white, so it's a little more understandable. But uh, anyway, guys, hopefully that helps. Uh, I appreciate you watching, and please subscribe.